You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. Welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Street Justice with Larry Levine. We're starting a little late today, and the reason why is none of your fucking business, but we're here. We're here and now. It's 4.30 on the East Coast. It's 7.30 on the – no, it's 4.30 on the West Coast, 7.30 on the East Coast. So our listeners on the East Coast have probably already started drinking for the weekend. I know that I still have a little bit of time to go before I could do that because it's still early. I want to thank you for listening. Holly should be joining us, my co-host, Holly Houghton, should be joining us maybe about a half hour from now. So in the meantime, if you want to call in, you want to talk shit, you want to tell me I'm an asshole, nothing I don't know, number is 866-415-1451. That's 866-415-1451. Call right now. Special operators are now standing by. Remember that nonsense they used to do when people were trying to sell shit on TV at midnight? Special operators now standing by for the first 100 callers. They're going to give you something free. Everybody got something free. Anyway, we're going to start by talking about the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Or is that what it means? Does it mean feeble-brained investigators? Does it mean forever bothering Italians? I guess it could mean that. It could mean all kinds of shit. So, FBI comes and knocks on your door. Boom, boom, boom. I guess they want to talk to you about something. They usually stage these raids early in the morning because they want to catch you asleep. It's kind of like what they did to, to uh, Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, when they did a raid on him. But they got to have a warrant to come in, two kinds of warrants. One warrant's called a no-knock warrant. And if you're smart like most of my listeners, or you're a fucking moron like some of them too, no-knock means they don't need to fucking knock. It means the only thing they're going to knock is your fucking door down, knock your door in. They're coming in, and um, they're going to start looking for shit. Now, if they got the other kind of warrant, they have to knock on your door. Boom, boom, boom. And they say there's a reasonable amount of time for you to open the door before they actually, I guess, kick the door in, come in, because they don't want you destroying evidence. But a reasonable amount of time, that's kind of subjective. Is it 30 seconds? Is it a minute? Is it two minutes? And if you're a white-collar criminal, you got uh, reams of paper to destroy. That could take a while. Or if you're like a drug dealer and you got some cocaine, <clears throat> some marijuana, methamphetamine, other stuff, LSD. I mean, you could just go to your toilet, put that in the toilet and push the button. And the product is long gone. But here's the kick on this. So the FBI, they come in. They're going to sit you down on the couch, maybe handcuff you on the floor. They're going to search your whole place. 
they're going to tear your place apart. They're going to look into your cushions or your couches and tear the furniture apart. They can't really damage anything, although it happens. They're going to look in your drawers, your wife's underwear drawer, look at her lingerie, the medicine chest. They're going to open everything, trying to find whatever goodies or treasures you may have hidden. And you know what you could do about this? Nothing. Nothing at all. You better hope that your your Doberman pincher or your pit bull doesn't try to bite one of these agents. Because if they do, they're going to put a bullet. If the dog does, if they haven't locked the dog up somewhere, they're going to tell you to do something with the dog. They're going to put a bullet in the dog. So the dog better not act up. Anyway, so they're going to look through all your shit. You know, they're there for a reason. They just... They just didn't randomly knock on your door and say, hey, it's time to fuck with Charlie. They're going to want to take a look and see what you got. Eventually, they're going to question you. After they've fucked with you, made your neighbors think you're Ben Laden's little brother, and you know they're all milling around outside and everybody's looking. Those, na- those nosy neighbors you don't like, well, they're getting in on the act too. They might even go talk to your neighbors, ask, is there anything suspicious going on? You know, if that was me and I saw, they came and talked to me and my neighbors have got busted, I'd go, well, not really. The only thing I see suspicious right now is you people running around with your little fucking blue windbreakers that say FBI on it, waking the whole fucking neighborhood up at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's suspicious. But they're eventually, they're going to try to get you at ease because they want to question you kind of want to cut a deal with you they want to cut a deal with everybody now the head agent there special agent uh, supervisory special agent he's going to act like he's your friend all right they may at this point be taking you down to the fbi building if you're in a a big city that is fortunate enough to have the fbi or unfortunate they might take you down to the local police station, sheriff station. They're going to take you somewhere to question you. Now, when they read you your rights, let's go over those rights. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to have an attorney present with you during questioning. And if you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you at no charge, no cost to you. That's right. It's the fucking taxpayers. It's you and me that has to pay for that. Anyway, the best thing you can do is don't become a toilet mouth. Do not become your own worst enemy. When they say you have the right to remain silent, yes, you do. And you should remain silent because anything you say can and will be used against you. And they will take what you say and they will twist your words. They've already got an inkling as far as what you're up to or they wouldn't be coming in the door at 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, the agents, they work for the Justice Department, just like uh, the prosecutor works for the Justice Department. You've got several main federal agencies that will come out and bust your ass. The big ones everybody knows of, we have the DEA. Drug Enforcement Administration. They also have special agents. We have the ATF, or ATF-E, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. They used to be part of the Justice Department, but now they're part of, uh, no, no, they used to be part of, what do you call it? They used to be part of the Treasury Department. They transferred ATF over to the Justice Department. And we have the U.S. Marshal Service, another big federal agency. So those are really, really, you know, I got the Federal Protective Service, but they just guard like federal buildings. There's a slew of other little agencies, part of justice. But your main ones who are going to fuck with you are ATF, DEA, FBI, and the U.S. Marshals. These people, all they are is investigators. Okay, they don't, they can cut a deal to a certain degree, But when they tell you that if you cooperate now, we're going to let you go. If you cooperate and tell us what we want to know, we're not going to charge you. 
they're going to try to put you at ease. They could lie to you. They could mislead you. A lot of times they do. They have zero authority. Zero. A hair on the back of my ass has the same power and authority as to decide whether or not to charge you for a federal crime. This is all up to the prosecutor, also known as the U.S. attorney, the United States attorney. The U.S. attorney is the one who's going to decide <clears throat> whether or not you're going to be indicted, whether or not you're going to be charged, you're going to be sentenced. The agent just investigates. So don't be fooled by them telling you that they're going to give you a break unless they're planning on letting you go and pretending the whole thing never happened. But, you know, at this point, it's a little late when they've gotten a search warrant from a judge. There's 30 agents tearing your shit up. The money and the manpower that they've spent takes time, takes money to do all this. Once they've got you by the balls, they don't want to let you go. They do not. They have you, and they want to keep you. So don't be fooled. Don't be a victim. Don't give up your right to remain silent. Wait for your lawyer. See what your lawyer has to say. You know, they could take anything you say and they'll spin it. When they say they'll use it against you, I said this a minute ago. I know I'm being fucking redundant, but they will. They will spin this motherfucker against you, and you could lead them to new charges. You could lead them to new crimes. You're not smarter than they are. And these people aren't rocket scientists or genius that work for these federal agencies. A lot of them were street cops, decided they wanted to work for the feds. A lot of them, I don't know, FBI, they were accountants. They were lawyers. I think now a lot of them since 9-11 are linguists and such. But they all have something in common. They all want information from you, something you may know. You may be part of a conspiracy. You may lead them to a new crime they didn't know about. Best thing I could say is keep your pie hole shut. Don't say a fucking word. Nothing. And let me ask our producer. It's not AJ today. I forget his name. What's your name, producer? Perry. P-E-R-R-Y. I apologize for not remembering your name. You know, it's the Jack Daniels I'm sipping right now because of my cough. You notice, Perry, I haven't coughed since we've been on, but I will. Perry, if the FBI came to your door and kicked the door in, um, would you cooperate or would you wait to talk to your lawyer? Wouldn't talk to him until you had a lawyer. You wouldn't just start running your mouth and ratting people out. No. I want to know what our listeners think of this. 866-415-1451. Call in. Tell them. Uh, 1451, right? No, it's 866-415. 451. I better fucking change this. Hold on a minute here. You better make sure. On the Facebook page, because inevitably there's some asshole that was trying to call in. I just changed it. I hope he's right, or I'm going to be like a moron. 866-451-1451. Wow, if that's the wrong number I had, I've had that wrong for the last couple of weeks. Imagine that. But cops come, FBI comes, they question you. Wait for your lawyer. Do not be stupid. Do not volunteer something that's really going to hurt you later. Don't try to outsmart them. Don't lie to them. If you lie to them, that is an entirely other charge. They can get you for obstruction of justice. Remember, Martha Stewart, when she got busted, they went out and questioned her about insider trading on the stock market, which inevitably they found out she didn't do. She wasn't charged with insider trading. She was charged. Did you find out? Is it the right number? 866-451-1451. Call now. Call Director Collect. Hey, we're going to cut to a commercial. And when I come back from our commercial, I better have somebody on the line with us. 866-451-1451. 
We'll be right back here with you on Street Justice with Larry Levine. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. Hi, you're back live with Larry Levine here on Street Justice with Larry Levine. (laughs) My <coughs> my cough I was about to say <laughs> I was about to say my co-host Holly Holly's going to be joining us any minute. She just messaged me and says that she's ready. So Holly will be calling in, and I want other people to call in. Tell us about your views, about your opinions on crime, the feds, the FBI. But the bottom line from the first segment: FBI, DEA, ATF, Secret Service, U.S. Marshal. The Boy Scouts, Perry with a big baseball bat. Anybody comes to your door, you don't have to answer questions. Just tell tell them who you are. Wait for your lawyer. Lawyer up. They'll appoint a lawyer for you. They're not going to gig it against you. You don't have to cooperate immediately. Remember that uh, they just – I think Holly is calling in on the uh, network For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. Call 
Welcome back to Street Justice with Larry Levine. We had a technical difficulty for a brief moment. Holly Houghton, my co-host, is now live with us, live from San Diego, California. It's Holly Houghton on the Street Justice Show with Larry Levine. Holly, Hello. welcome Hello. back to the show. I was late to the party. Sorry. Party. You're actually... I didn't expect you. Remember, listeners, we're in California. We're not on the East Coast. I didn't expect <laughs> Holly till about five o'clock. But Holly is a bit early. She's late, but she's a bit early. Late, but a bit alert. Okay. Late, we'll but go early. With that. That's kind of like somebody having a baby. I'm late, but the baby's doing nine months, but it came in eight, so they're late and early. <laughs> we'll use that. So Holly, we'll go with that. I, was, yeah. I was just talking about uh, the FBI coming to your door, not your door, coming oh. to. Anybody's door. Anybody's door. door. It's not like uh, the, not a favorite thing, is it? Not a pleasant experience. No, it's not. Now, let's see how smart Holly is. I know she's a smart chick or she wouldn't be on here with me because I have no tolerance for idiots. FBI comes to your door. They raid your house. They sit you down on the couch. They take the dog outside so the dog doesn't bite them. They want to ask you a bunch of questions. So. Do you answer all their questions while they are there, or do you wait for a lawyer? You wait for a lawyer. You are wait. polite. Yes, wait for a lawyer. That's they're gonna right. Try, they're going to try and coax you into answering things. They're going to make it seem like you have to answer. That's right. And you do not. So are they going to lie, or are they going to coerce you? <laughs> they're going to do both. They're going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna no, do both. Oh, really? Really. They're going to do both. That's kind of like when uh, I got arrested. And I actually got arrested. We talked about this last week in a parking lot. Maybe it was a week before. But but it was a spectacular like, show. <laughs> yes. They were showing me, like, uh, pictures and all this shit. And I'm um, like, uh-huh. I'm just shaking my head, giving them, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, they can't read me. They have no, like, fucking idea. I could have been, like, asleep with my eyes closed. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I wouldn't answer any of their questions other than one. We know you were such and such, and they're showing me a picture. And I'm looking at it, you know, is that you? And I thought, well, and this it, couldn't. Yeah. I said, well, did you follow me there from somewhere? Yes. Does the report say it's me? You're like, well, yes. I go, well, then I guess it is me. If you fucking already know it's me, why are you asking me if it's me? Just to get you to clarify. Yeah. Do you, do you have any other questions other... for me that you right. know the answer to? <laughs> Let's play a guessing game. Why don't you ask me what you had for lunch today? Why don't you ask me why you didn't get that sport coat, tents of the dry cleaner, because it's got a fucking stain on it. You know, see, but Aren't you're you? also you're pretty astute. You're looking at you, you're seeing the bigger picture here. Yeah, I it, was just, you know, completely blindsided. And they're trying to ask me certain questions. And then they're going off to a little sidebar and conferring. And then they're coming back and they're trying to confuse you to make you. Go, well, what are you doing? Asking. Uh huh. Well, see, what I would have answered their questions. But you know why I didn't, Holly? Because they didn't say Simon Says. <laughs> Pretty please, Simon Says. Yeah, they'd have to ask, yeah. ask nicely. Ask nicely. Yeah. yeah, ask nicely. So, Holly, so, yeah. you're down there in uh, San Diego. Is it real warm there today? What's it like? It's a beautiful, beautiful San Diego day. Is it warm? Mid-70s. Mid-70s. Gorgeous. Yeah. Is Typical there a breeze? Cal. There is a wonderful breeze. Wonderful breeze. And from for you to get home, Holly works in a law office. We won't hold that against her. <laughs> uh, did you have to go on the uh, on the five? I did not have to take any of the major freeways. None of the major L.A. freeways or Southern not, California freeways. Not on this commute. Not now. Okay. It is a pleasant drive. Sounds like it. Wow. Well, I'm up the coast from Holly. I'm about 200 miles away. I'm actually in Ventura County, for those of you that don't know. And we do this remote. We remote over the satellite to the studio in New York. And you all, by the the miracle 
of data networks, the internet, uh, an act of God, my being sober. You get to hear me on the air talking shit about whatever I want because this is my show. Right. And I could talk about anything. I could talk about Steve Bannon, that fucking moron, losing his job today. Boo hoo. <laughs> oh, I know. And I'm going to organize because I'm worried about Steve. I'm worried about the Winklevoss oh. twins, too. Oh. Those, the guys that ripped off uh, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg on Facebook. Yeah. I'm worried about the Winklevoss twins. They might not have any what? money for anything. But I'm going to send some people out in front of the supermarkets with little cups to collect money and maybe canned goods. The Steve Banyan. Bannon. Yeah, the I Banyan. feel bad for him. He's out of a job. You know, I need someone here to take out my trash. Well, I don't know if I can get him to do that. Well, so, Holly, we had a whole bunch of stuff, topics we were going to we talk do. about. Yeah. I kind of looked at your list, and this is how <clears throat> I got kind of on the FBI fixation today, at least for the beginning of the show. Like, what do you do when the FBI comes out? Do you call Ghostbusters? Do you run your <laughs> mouth? No. You keep your mouth mm -hmm. shut. Flat you out. don't know the answer to something, you say you don't know. You don't lie. <clears throat> you don't fabricate. On a future show, I'm going to teach people again how to lie on the witness stand. It's always a favorite of oh, mine. Oh, that never happens. No, no. of course not. I, you <laughs> swore to happens. tell the you truth, swore. the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, of course I do. Federal agent gets on there. Do you swear to tell the truth? Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Oh, we really know that they do. Mm -hmm. Everybody is, you know what? In Coached. a courtroom, mm -hmm. everybody's full of shit. Everybody. It's a The shame. judge, he's bored to tears. I remember reading a case about some judge, I don't know, in Tennessee or somewhere in North Carolina. The judge had a TV or, or like or a monitor, something underneath his bench and he was watching porno movies and he was, <laughs> <laughs> he was masturbating oh <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing somehow somebody found out and this guy he got like censured or something it really was more like <clears throat> like a, a deviant act deviant act <clears throat> in a courtroom yes Nobody knew he was doing well. Somebody <laughs> must have known, because the guy ended up getting busted. And, and how far did he fall? But uh, crazy shit happens in the courtroom. But we'll talk about the courtroom on another show. We're going to talk about when we come back because we're going to cut to a break in a minute or so. Perry, our engineer, he's going to uh, probably tell me in about a minute or so. AJ, our normal engineer, he's not here. It's Friday night in New York. AJ's out on the town. He's getting loaded. Then he's going to go home and get laid. <laughs> it's the Friday night. It's, date, it's night. date night. <laughs> date night. Date night in New York. Actually, mm. they're on Long Island. So, I don't know. Let me ask Perry. Perry, is there any nightlife on New on Long Island? Really? Would you go to the city, Perry? Is is this like Manhattan or you go to Brooklyn? See, I've heard that. I want to know why. I want to know what the yeah, trend why, is. Why, are why the shift? Oh. So that's the reason. <laughs> Perry, okay. Perry just informed us that he hangs out in Brooklyn. He's got a buddy there that has a pad and they go there, they go to the bars, they get loaded, they pick up women, they take the woman home, and they take turns with the woman. Wow. They, Perry, Perry, I got to ask Perry, Perry. this. I asked, I asked AJ this last week. Perry, <laughs> have you ever watched in-room movies in a hotel? Really? Okay, if you were to watch movies, would it be the homosexual <laughs> type or... The ones with a woman and a dude. Women with women yeah. with women. Women okay. with women. Hmm. Okay. See, Perry's Perry's normal. That's a good answer. You know what, Perry? It's a good answer.
because it wasn't even one of the answers. Perry's clever. He came up with his own. All right, we're going to cut to a commercial here on Street Justice with Larry Levine. I'm joined by my co-host, Holly Houghton, and we'll be right back here with you. So keep on listening. Talk to you soon. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is Holly Houghton. I'm co-hosting with Larry Levine on Street Justice, and we're going to kind of switch a little bit of topics right now. We're going to talk about the 10 top most stupid things that officers do and say in prison. So we're going to talk about stupid prison guards? Is that? (laughs) It's Yeah. Straight across the board. Straight across the board. Yeah, they all are. Okay. I think I could come up with some stuff. Um, First thing is they come to work in the morning or the afternoon. That's kind of stupid. No, they think, Holly, you ever notice how a lot of these correctional workers, correctional officers, they think that they're smarter than the inmates just because somebody's locked up, they're stupid? Yes. It's it, – <laughs> I know. It's flabbergasting. They, they feel it is flabbergasting that they have so much knowledge – that they, like, they do this job in, you know, <laughs> that's their life. They're stuck oh, there. Oh, yeah. Well, that and going yeah. back after work, maybe maybe to the trailer park, smoking yeah. cigarettes, drinking beer, and uh, trying to screw their neighbor's wife or something. You know, prisons aren't located in the nice parts of towns. Socioeconomically, they're pretty, you're, this is the only type of job they're going to be able to do. Well, is that because they ran out of jobs at Walmart? They ran out of jobs at Walmart. I mean, I want to. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a fireman. I want to be a cowboy. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, in back. I see your hand. What do you want to be? I want to be a prison guard. No. So yeah, they're already challenged when they're they're showing up for work. Johnny, your little helmet fell off. Put that helmet back on. We don't need to get in your head or. But, you know, Holly, a lot of these, I shouldn't say a lot, many prison guards, and I know that I'm going to have former BOP, like, messaging me shit. I'm sure you will. I will. (laughs) You're all prisoners, for those of you who don't know. They're not all bad. They're not all stupid. But they they do 
stupid things. And I would get on the phone, Holly, and I would be talking to whoever, and I'd go, yeah, the staff here, they're all infected. It's an epidemic. And my and person panic. on the other <laughs> Well, my person on the other end is playing along. Hmm. They go, what is it? I go, it is the worst epidemic of BMF I've ever seen. You've just created a panic. <laughs> BMF. And they're like, there. wow, what do you think is going to happen? I have no idea. BMF stands for boogeyman fever. <laughs> that they are just suspicious of everything. Everything's a suspicion. Everything. Everything is. It's yeah, conspiracy. You're plotting. They're plotting, yeah. You're plotting. You're plotting your mass escape by BMF. The inmates <laughs> are going to escape. Uh, they're going to go jump over the two uh, fences with the barbed wire and the moron in the truck driving the perimeter with the uh, M16. Yeah. I imagine some people will do that. I used to, I used to walk along the fence line, and I would pace. It was like I was counting. And I would do this for like an hour. I'd get my exercise. And Again. I made a big show of it. So, you know, the staff saw me doing it. And I could see them like eye fucking me. They're like, like watching me walk. And You're up uh, to something. Up, I, I wanted them to, to believe I was. They'd be wishing, well, mm -hmm. what's he doing? I don't know. And I was just waiting for one of them <laughs> to come up and ask me. But nobody ever did. They never asked what I was doing. They just watched. And then the yeah. perimeter stuck the uh, truck. Ah, uh, that stopped came by. on the other side mm -hmm. of the fence. And they would watch me, and it's not hard to. You know what? I was like you a just fidget, put on a show. No, I, I was like a fidget spinner for them. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, I've kept all you people busy for the last hour. It's nuts. What is the, You're just going, what is the focus, right? What is the stupidest thing you ever saw a BOP worker do? Uh, let's see. I've seen him rip an axle off a truck by driving over a boulder that they drove this route every day. <laughs> oh, maybe. Well, wait, wait, wait. Maybe there was like divine intervention there, or something. Uh, the boulder appeared in the highway. No, this boulder was there. For years, they drove and just literally drove right over it and ripped that thing off. That was. <laughs> did they blame the inmates? They did not blame the inmates. That was the difference. You wreck or do any damage to government property, you're going to get an infraction. No, nothing happened to them. And in fact, the female inmates had to fix the truck. So it was just interesting to watch that happen, the buffoonery. <laughs> I had a job at uh, – I had a lot of jobs in the BOP. But I was taking out a small trash can out of an office to empty it into a larger trash can. Mm -hmm. So I was like walking along, and the cop – they're all suspicious of something. He stops me. He says, what's in the trash can? I go, well, I don't know, trash? And uh, Novel. He right. says, are you taking the trash out? <laughs> and I go, no. He goes, well, what are you doing with it? I says, well, I thought I would take it back to my housing unit and put it in my locker. What the fuck do you think I'm doing with it? And he just had like the stupidest look in, you know, on his face. Yes, I'm taking the trash You're out. You're taking stupid. the trash out. Yeah. The, like, is, are you? <laughs> are you? Uh, are you going to the bathroom? No, we don't bathe in here. That's like a, a restroom. But yes, I'm going to use. I'm the going toilet. to use right. It's just like stupid questions constantly, and they're yes, this is what I'm doing. Yes. Pretty obvious. I remember when I was in Phoenix. Was it Phoenix I was at or Safford? I was in 11 different places, so I fucking lose track. <laughs> Let me ask Perry. Perry, but how many prisons have you been in? Now, how about jails? Yeah. 
He's thinking. He's counting. He's so oh, wow, a big, a big number. Uh, Mayberry, Barney, Fife, and all that. So oh, well, that's not. So, a, did they have you in the holding jail. cell? Uh-huh. Were well, you too drunk? They may have. You don't know. Well, okay. You never got caught shoplifting, and they put you in the little holding cell in the store or anything. No, never done that. Different kinds of, you know. In the other. The was, oh, go ahead, Holly. The other story I had was checking in, going through receiving. R and D, and discharge, being processed. Uh-huh. Guy couldn't figure out what forms to use, what forms not to use, so he just had me sign all the forms at the bottom. Said you explain later, and stuck them in a drawer. <laughs> he didn't know what to do with them. He was the manager too. Yes, he was. He was the head person in charge. And you're like. Are you going to process that? Are you going to actually do something with that? He's like, I really don't know. I don't, I don't I, know. I, today is my <laughs> first day. Holly, they go to Glencoe, Georgia. And if people are hearing like this noise in the background, I've got all these casino chips here from a trip to Vegas. I once stopped at several casinos and got a bunch of $1 chips, and I'm playing with them. It takes my mind off my problems. But um, the BOP... I forgot, what was I talking about, Holly? My mind. Glencoe, Georgia. What was Glencoe, that? Glencoe, Georgia. There we go. I got to stop si- sipping the Jack Daniels while I'm working, <laughs> but it kills the cough. Okay. The Federal Bureau of Prisons has a training academy in Glencoe, Georgia at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. Holly, have you heard of that place it, before? Yes, I have. All right. BOP sent its people there. How long, Holly, do you think their training academy is? Oh, on the taxpayer dime, let's see, as long as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say what? Two weeks? Two, shit, she's good. 21 days. Yeah. I'm going to give you like point, point seven one credit because that's Thank a good you. guess. It point was. Seven one. They don't get a lot of training. They do no. not. You know, and they don't allow them other than if they're on like perimeter duty. These people don't carry guns. You don't want these people carrying guns. No. At all. They no. would be dangerous carrying guns. But they go for 21 days, and that is three weeks Nothing. for you people that, you know, yeah. can't count or think. And you get what you get. These are not <clears throat> they're the not brightest. rocket scientists. No, they're not. Yeah. You don't get the cream of the cream of the cream. You get people that are just a little bit out there. Some of them are a lot out there. Some of them are. They they like to play policemen. They love to do that. Yeah, they I'm an officer. Okay, congratulations, officer. Officer I'm officer friendly. You don't seem very friendly to me. But the BOP, it's a strange beast. They call it like backwards on purpose, be other people. But I've never some seen of these people, laziness taken to a new level. I got to tell the laziness. story. Laziness. I got to tell the story of the chocolate cow. Oh, okay. I, I love it. Have I told you this story before? Yeah, I have. I do know this one. Yes. We're going to be coming. We're going to be going to a commercial break and soon let me ask perry perry when's our break go to it now perry now. says we can go to the break now so we're going to be right back here with you on street justice with larry levine i'm joined by my co-host holly houghton and uh if you got a pair of balls call into the show 866-451-1451 is that the right number eight uh perry Four five one one four five one. So we'll be right back with you. Keep on listening. 
Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. I'm I'm quick. It's all the cocaine. No, I don't do cocaine. (laughs) Hey, welcome back to Street Justice with Larry Levine. I'm joined by a co-host, Holly Hout. See, when I I cough, when I get excited. Are you really excited? And when I mentioned Holly's name, I cough. I don't know. What is what's going on, Holly? I don't know. I don't know either. Oh, Um, I better turn the air on. Anyway, uh, I'm going to tell the story of the chocolate cow. It's a really funny BOP staff story. Lompoc, California. For those Where we got of you all are, of our milk. <laughs> all of our milk. They had a big dairy farm operation in Lompoc, California. <laughs> big farm uh, cows and all that. And they would supply the milk to all the federal prisons on the West Coast. Now, since we were at Lompoc, the inmates there, we had free access to the milk. We could we go by the dairy. We could get whatever we wanted. No big deal. Well, there was this correctional officer there. First name of Paul. Last name started with a G. I won't mention his last name out of a little bit of some kind of respect. Those of you listening who worked at Lompoc will know who I mean. This guy was kind of looked like a big baby, Huey. He had a Beatles haircut. Good to talk like this. Anyway. Um, I went into his office and I saw that he was sucking down milk, chocolate milk. This guy loved chocolate milk. A picture when you go, these are like the small cartons, you know, like you got when you were in school. Only thing is it said USP Lompoc on them, but it was like legitimate chilled milk. They did like chocolate milk and they did regular milk there. Well, this guy had like one of those big crates full of these little cartons, and he's sucking them down. And there's other officers in the office. And I walk in, and, you know, I'm an asshole. I couldn't help but fuck with this guy. And he's just having the best time drinking this shit down. (laughs) So I go, hey, Jerry, let's call him Officer Jerry. No more chocolate milk. 
that's the last of it. The chocolate milk is over. And he gets this, like, really, really weird look on his face. He's looking over at me, and the other cops stop what they're doing, and they're watching. They don't know what I'm going to say. But, you know, they knew that if I was talking to this guy, I was obviously fucking with him. So he goes, really? I go, yeah. You want to know why? He goes, how come? I said, because the chocolate cow died. And the look of, like, discovery on his face... He goes, did not. And I'm like, did so. And we went back and forth for a few seconds. And I like walked out of the office and I told the other staff members, and you got to like work with him and rely on him. This guy really, really believed that there was like a chocolate cow. A chocolate cow. Unbelievable. (laughs) These parents have seen a chocolate cow? Yeah. Yeah, the. The chocolate cow is what makes chocolate milk. Now, Perry, Perry says he has one at home. <laughs> and matter of fact, Perry doesn't, Perry, like, he milks the chocolate cow and he sucks off the chocolate cow's nipple. Yeah, Perry, I'm going to be on a plane tomorrow. You've got to show me that live. But this cop actually believed I had a, that the institution had a chocolate cow. He probably still believes it. I'm sure he does. Everywhere. It's appalling. Uh, and this is everywhere. It is everywhere. Just like when I was moved into the electrical department and we went money. out. Did you, get, did you get a real charge out of that? I got a real charge. I bet. <laughs> was the person that worked in the powerhouse was promoted to the complex electrician. No electrician degree. Nothing. No license. So they gave him a new title. Is that like title? Is that like the people, Holly, that work in psychology for the prison system? (laughs) I believe they have no degree, but they call themselves doctor. (laughs) Yes. You ran into that a couple of times. Yes. So we're headed out. Yeah, yeah. In the truck. Okay. We're headed out. We're going to be replacing a street light, and. I just sit back and watch. He didn't want me to do anything in the cherry picker. So I'm just watching this go up and down. And finally, I asked him when he got up, you did turn the the electricity off. Did you? Did you do that? I literally was ready to just start digging in. I just couldn't let him do it. I had to say, you did turn the electricity off. No. So down he comes. You should have gotten an award for saving Stupid's life. I should have. I should have. It's just like, again, working as the a clerk and the head of the engineering department for the complex was trying to put together and add things up. He's adding it on a calculator and going over and over on a calculator because he doesn't know how to use Excel. So he has me was he the over guy in his charge? shoulder teach him. Yeah, this is the guy in charge. Okay, it's making sure Normally we have I'm a, doing the work. Normally we have a responsible, intelligent person there. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, I didn't know how to do that. So you taught him something new. <laughs> I did. There was this one officer when I was at Safford. Last name is Romero. I won't say his first name. And he asked me if I can help write a resume for his son who was just graduating from college. Really? Yeah, I go, okay, how old is this kid? He goes, 19. He's 19, he's looking for a job, and he doesn't know how to write a resume. Wow. No, he wasn't 19. He was graduating from college. The apple didn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, I'm thinking, wait a minute. (laughs) I've got my uh, my my years and dates and ages mixed up. But, you know, the staff member couldn't do it. He had a responsible job, too. He couldn't do it himself. Couldn't do it. They had to find one of the stupid inmates to do it. Now, I'm I convinced remember... that's why they still have typewriters. I'm convinced. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so 
cops decide to shake down a group of us walking. I have these paper clips in my pocket for whatever reason. I don't know. I probably threw them in my khaki pocket. Shakes me down, pulls all my shit out. He goes, well, what are the paper clips for? I said, do you want me to lie to you and tell you what paper clips are for? Or do you want the real reason? <laughs> At this point, he's thinking because he doesn't know. It's just like, like, oh. Is this what? a trick question? question. <laughs> and uh, I go, normally people use those paper clips to keep papers together. But I have a different plan for them. Like, well, what are you going to use them for? I said, when nobody's looking, I'm going to go to the front gate. And I'm going to pick the lock and let myself uh, out. I said, I think you should maybe write me up for this. File like an incident report or something. And he's, this guy is like contemplating. Uh, he's t- he said, they dare they get that look when you and confuse the cop, them. I know. And the cop <laughs> standing next to him is like shaking his head. He takes the paper clips away from this other cop, gives them back to me, and they just like walk away. And he's probably thinking, you idiot. I'm going to, yeah, Holly, what is the likelihood in an institution that an inmate, first of all, is going to get to the gate? Then they're going to pick the lock at the gate with a paper clip. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. But not the proper tool. <laughs> no. No, it's not the proper tool. Another stupid thing. They ask stupid questions. Things that constantly. You know, you and I would. Anyway, I could tell you start a story that happened in an institution I was at. Okay. Where we're watching and there's a cop that is backing up a white pickup truck. And we're just watching this guy back up his pickup truck. He backs it up into a fire hydrant, right? <laughs> and we're just watching. <laughs> and watch nobody, it nobody says a word. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like laughing let, let it... ourselves. And he sees us. He doesn't know why we're laughing, and he hits it, and all of a sudden, it's like fucking, uh, it's like a geyser at a national fucking park. It was like my neighborhood last week. No. <laughs> yeah, well, that was an, but that was an old and senile person, Holly. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking about a highly skilled, highly trained. Oh, I know. Ooh. Had twenty-one days of training. Incredible. So they come out, and they uh, they got to turn the water off. And they've got to turn like the water off in the institution to to shut this thing down. Then they got to find another valve. Turns into a big ordeal. Then there's like an investigation. I'm thinking, well, you're going to investigate stupidity, okay? And we're going to cut to a commercial in 30 seconds. And I'll explain to you when I was questioned about this because they questioned the inmates who were in the area, what I told the investigator. We'll be right back here with you on Street Justice with Larry Levine on BBM Global.